Hey guys, how's it going? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab, and what I got for you in this review is the Tamron 11 to 20 millimeter f 2.8 di3a rxd lens now what this lens is it's an ultra wide angle zoom lens super high quality it's got a f 2.8 max aperture so it's going to be great for low light photography astrophotography real estate photography landscape photography and any other wide angle lens photography needs you might have this lens goes for about 829 dollars us at the time of this review so we're going to go over some lab photos and then we're going to go over some real world photos and i also have a whole bunch of video footage of me mountain biking and that came out really good i think you guys are going to really like check that out so i also just wanted to give a special thanks to bh photo video for letting me borrow this lens for this review i really appreciate it and if you guys need any gear for photography or video be sure to check out bh photo video it's an awesome store links below the video So here she is in my hands and this lens is actually really lightweight it's 11.8 ounces or 335 grams so it's definitely lighter than I expected it to be considering it's an f 2.8 constant aperture ultra wide angle zoom lens now the effective range on this lens is going to be 17 to 30 millimeter and it has a max aperture again of f 2.8 all the way to f 16 throughout the zoom range it has 12 elements in 10 groups. It also has the broadband anti-reflective coatings on the uh, lens elements in there, and it has the fluorine lens coating on the front lens element. And this is also a 67 millimeter thread if you want to put some filters on there. I'll have some filters linked below for those looking for recommendations. This also has the RXD super fast, super quiet autofocus stepping motor. It's extremely accurate and it works really good. has a minimum focus distance of 5.9 inches or 15 centimeters. It has a rounded seven blade aperture diaphragm in there. Let me just switch this lens hood around here. That's what it looks like with the lens hood on properly. Now the zoom on this lens doesn't really move much at all. Check that out. So that's how much it goes. And 11 millimeter is with the lens zoomed out. You actually put it the other way you actually close the lens for 20 millimeter which is interesting I've seen that before on some wide angle lenses looking at it from the back you have a nice metal lens bayonet there and it also has the rubber gasket which is really nice helps for uh, weather sealing it's got a very good weather sealing on this lens 
And let me just show you what it looks like mounted up to the A6400. So that's what it looks like mounted up to the A6400. You see it looks quite good. Pretty compact. Fairly lightweight combo. See from the sides, pretty fat lens, but not too fat. All right, it's looking pretty good. All right, so here we are in the lab. I'm just going to go through some of these test photos really fast. So this is at 11 millimeter, and I just want to show you what the distortion looks like when I enable the profile lens correction. So you can see there it definitely has a little bit of distortion and vignetting. Now let me just zoom in and show you how sharp this is in the corners. So you can see the corner sharpness is very, very good. The depth of field is fairly narrow because it's at f2.8, don't forget. So this soda, this uh, can here is actually sticking out a little bit. But if you look on the corner of the circuit board, you can see it's very, very sharp. And you can also see the bokeh ball renderings in the background there. Pretty, pretty sweet. Center sharpness is awesome. Now looking at 14 millimeter, if I zoom in here on the corners, again, f2.8, you can see extremely sharp corners. Razor blade in the center area. Pipe cleaners look excellent. No fringing whatsoever. Bokeh balls also look very good. Now if we check out 16 millimeter, again, excellent corner sharpness. And center sharpness is phenomenal. Okay, balls, background defocus is looking really good as well. And here it is at 20 millimeter. Now if I zoom in, you can see the center sharpness is excellent. Bokeh balls, all that stuff is looking really good. And corner sharpness, if I go down here to the bottom left, is also looking very, very good. So another great performer from Tamron here. Let me show you what the distortion looks like at 20 millimeter. It's not really that bad, but there's a little bit. Here's what it looks like at 16 millimeter. Here it actually looks like it overcorrects the vignette just a little bit. And here it is at 14 millimeter. And very little distortions, just trying to correct the vignette. Almost looks like it's overdoing it a little bit, but. All right, so check out the minimum focus distance. Now, the minimum focus distance on this lens is 5.9 inches or 15 centimeters. And this is what it looks like as close as I could get it to the quarter. So. This is at 20 millimeter f2.8, and here's f4, f5.6, f8, f11, and f16. If I zoom in here, you can see the detail is excellent at f16. f8 is probably going to be the peak sharpness f between f8 and f5.6, as you can see here. Exceptionally good. And then if I uh, go back to f2.8, you can see the perfectly round OK ball renderings. All right, guys, let's move on to some real-world photos now. All right, so looking at some real-world photos, we have the Salisbury Mills Viaduct Trestle here. Uh, you might have seen from my other review that I recently did with the 17 to 70 millimeter Tamron lens. And you can see just how wide this lens is. It's incredible. I'll compare a couple of shots to some other lenses in a minute so you can see just how wide this lens is compared to other lenses. So at 11 millimeter, you could just see, I mean, the bridge looks so far away, and uh, the cows are like tiny little dots. And this is at 20 millimeter, same spot. Now looking underneath the trestle, I was trying to get it straight, but it's kind of hard to do. So I did a little correction here on the next frame, and this is as good as I could make it look, just adding some correction. Now if I zoom in, you can see just how sharp the detail is on this old steel bridge. Pretty awesome if you ask me. And I'll just show you a before and after. This is what it looked like straight off the camera. I just added some shadows and stuff like that as you can see on the right if you look at the sliders. And I also did a little bit of um, transformation correction. I just clicked auto here and it corrected the uh, distortion pretty well. So looking at another angle just a side profile and it's cool to watch the bridge fall off into you know infinity or whatever you want to call it here's another angle I got even lower and tried to get these weeds in the foreground I thought this shot looked pretty cool check out this spider web it's pretty cool because there's another spider web behind it but it's further away so it's slightly out of focus and it's creating this cool layering effect alright so here's another angle of the bridge and what I like about this shot is these 
11 millimeter allows you to incorporate this foreground interest and it has these nice purple you know weeds and it just adds a little bit to the scene as you'll see because at 20 millimeter this is as wide as you can get at 20 millimeter so that foreground detail is not there I could arguably get lower and try to get it in there but there's a guardrail in the way so it's not exactly easy so a wide angle lens just really gives you that extra ability to capture that foreground detail Here's a couple of shots at the Basher Kill. I also have HDR versions of these. I'll show you in a minute. Now this one I think would look really good as a pano. Let me just show you what that looks like. If I go to Crop, and then I click on, if I do a 1 to 4 crop ratio, something like that, Enter. That's a pretty cool pano right there. Here's just another angle. I could show you in the top left, you can see no fringing, none of that in the high contrast areas. There's no purple or blue. Really, really well controlled here. Here's a shot of the Vanderbilt Mansion, and with this 11 millimeter lens, I was able to get really close to the building and get this ultra wide angle view of it. Now, I did a little bit of correction on this one just to fix the vertical distortion, and you can see there, you can get a pretty good result if you play around with some of those sliders. Now, here's another one. This is an actual house, and over here, is a little model of the house. So see this little model? And here's a picture of the model of the house. And with this wide angle lens, you could just see, you can get all this background information into the shot. And uh, when I compare this to other lenses, you'll see the difference. Here's one of the garden, and you can just see this wide angle vastness. You get the, all of it in one shot. Here's one of my dad's truck at 11 millimeter. And again, the, just the distortion and wide angle effect really makes the truck look, you know, exaggerated. It's pretty cool, the effect you can get. Here's another one. I had the camera up high, looking down just a little bit. Now here's one inside my parents' house, just so you can see what kind of, you know, real estate type photography, sample photos, I guess you could call it. Here's one of Jace holding his uh, pineapple. <laughs> Such a good boy. Here's one looking up at the light. Here's a bowl of fruit on the counter. Now here's one just looking at the kitchen at 11 millimeter, and now I backed up a little bit. Just got all the way into the corner of the kitchen, and this is what you could see at 11 millimeter. It's really nice what you can do at a wide angle. Ultra wide angle, I should say. Here's another view, and here's another view. All right, let's check out some of these HDR photos quick. So here's one of the Salisbury Mills Viaduct HDR, so that's three exposures combined which just gives you that extra pop, extra shadow and highlight detail. See a little bit more uh, information in the clouds and stuff and the foreground. Now here's one of the Vanderbilt HDR. So you can see it's got a lot more information than the raw file did a minute ago. And here's one of that building that I just showed you a second ago, but an HDR version. Here's an HDR version of the model. And here's an HDR version of the garden. So you can see there's a lot of sky detail in the HDR version. And here's one of the Basher Kill. Here's another one. And another one. Now I just wanted to show you really quick how this lens compares to other lenses with the same scene pretty much. So this is using the Tamron 17 to 70 millimeter lens and this is as wide as I could get it. So look at this compared to this. So you can see 11 millimeter versus 17. It's such a big difference. And now here's another example. This is 11 millimeter looking at the garden at the Vanderbilt. And here's as wide as I can get 17 millimeter with the Tamron 17 to 70. So you can see all that additional information you can get. It's incredible. Now take a look at this. Look how wide angle this is 11 millimeter. And now here's a shot at 70 millimeter using the 17 to 70 millimeter Tamron. And here's a shot at 300 millimeter using the Tamron 70 to 300 millimeter. So you could see how just vastly different the perspective of this subject looks depending on what focal length you're using. And it's pretty cool. All right guys, let's move on to the conclusion and I'll give you my final thoughts on this lens. So as you can see from the sample video footage and all the sample photos, this wide angle Tamron 11 to 20 millimeter lens holds up extremely well. It's a very high quality optic. It's a perfect 
partner basically for the Tamron 17 to 70 millimeter if you require a wider angle view. That 11 to 20 millimeter zoom range is perfect for like just dialing in your composition um, just right. And uh, it's, it's a very lightweight lens compared to the 17 to 70 millimeter. So, you know, again, depending on your needs uh, for a lightweight, super wide angle kit, um, this is a great option. I used it on my Sony a6400 as you saw in all the mountain bike video footage And I had to carry the camera on you know in like a little camera bag on my hip while I was riding the mountain bike And it really wasn't that bad because the weight was fairly low It made it like usable in the field in that environment, which is just awesome I mean, that's exactly what I want. I want like compact and I want high quality in the field with the least amount of burden as possible and this is really a great lens for that purpose in my opinion and the fast f 2.8 aperture is just a bonus because it'll lower the iso numbers if you're in the woods like for example what i was filming you'll get lower isos with that faster f 2.8 aperture it is a little bit expensive for sure but it's a really high quality optic and you do get what you pay for so if you guys have any questions, be sure to ask below in the comments area and all the links and stuff will be in the description area below the video as well. Please be sure to give me a thumbs up and like the video if you thought this was useful and uh, consider subscribing if you wanna see more videos like this in the future. All right guys, I will catch up with you next time. Please have a great day and stay safe out there, all right?